Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Jeff Kelly and I'm here with my colleague, Bob Glitherow, who oversees product marketing for our analytics and data science practice. Uh, how are you doing, Bob? I'm doing great today, Jeff. How's the weather back in Boston? Uh, the weather today is not too bad. Cold, or about 20 degrees for a high, which is not great, but I'll tell you what, there's not three feet of snow out there, so I'm not complaining. Well, so, that's good news. Yeah, how about in uh, your area, the Bay Area? Uh, typical overcast San Francisco day in January. You know, at least it's not raining. Well, it sounds like we both have pretty standard days happening here weather-wise, but we certainly had no shortage of crazy weather recently. And so we're going to talk today about a customer who's doing some interesting things with analytics uh, around predicting severe weather and responding to it. So before we get into the specific customer, why don't you kind of lay the groundwork for us? What, what role can analytics and data science play in helping us predict these kind of extreme weather events? Sure. Well, a lot has to do with the types of weather patterns you're trying to uncover. Some storms develop slowly over a broad scale, and so traditional methods of analysis you know, are maybe able to deal with that time frame. Or some types of severe weather develop so quickly you know, that it overwhelms uh, current infrastructure. And so being able to capture data and apply machine learning at high speed gives researchers a better chance to predict severe weather events. Also, we can combine this data uh, with other data, mapping data, uh, data about uh, people movements, social networking data, to help you know governments and, and public institutions inform disaster response plans, uh, and then basically you know everything from kind of predicting where the storm is going to go to model and optimizing escape routes uh, in near real time, which is useful for helping to save lives. Absolutely. So one customer that's doing some interesting work here is Japan's National Institute of Information and Communications Technology. It's a bit of a mouthful, so I'm just going to call them NICT going forward. <laughs> but tell us a little bit about that organization and its mission. Sure. So NICT, the National Institute of Information and Communications Technology, is the only public research institute in Japan that specializes in the field of information and communications technology, so it's appropriately named. Um, it conducts integrated research and development of various advanced information and communication technologies and promotes cooperation with universities, industries, local governments, uh, and other research institutions. And they've developed a number of innovations in this area of weather modeling, for example. Okay, so talk a little bit more about specifically the analytics and some of the data science they're doing. Sure. So basically, they're conducting research into cross-domain analysis of big data uh, and basically applying this research to help model and predict severe weather events, uh, as well as epidemiological events. Hopefully, I said that right. Um, and they've developed another uh, analytics to basically handle processing from a number of innovations that they developed. For example, they have a new type of weather radar. Uh, it's called a phased away weather radar. And the way it differs in from traditional weather radars is that it can, can scan a much larger area of the sky and more deeply into the cloud formation than traditional weather radars do. Um, so they can create essentially a 3D model of weather patterns in the same amount of time that it used to take uh, two-dimensional uh, weather arrays. And so um, basically they can capture data within a 10 second for quick scan or 30 second time frame uh, and they can perform a complete visualization in just a little over a minute so they're able to uh, get this data out very quickly which is helpful for a storm uh, that can evolve very quickly uh, and has a short life cycle uh, it used to be the case that you know using the old technologies and the old methods uh, the storm would be over by the time they got the results back from their analysis so this is a lot more useful um, in helping that. And in the core of their uh, analytics uh, framework is what they're calling an event data warehouse. Uh, this data warehouse used to be based on open source PostgreSQL. Uh, one of the reasons that they liked it so much is that it was very, there were a lot of libraries around it uh, for data science that work with PostgreSQL um, that uh, were uh, appro that were approachable by languages such as Python and R, which are commonly used by weather researchers. Okay, and so I understand that they've now uh, migrated, I don't know if it's recently or far in the past, but they're now using Pivotal Greenplum, correct? 
Uh, it's within the last couple of years that they've adopted Green Plum and, and actually brought it online. Okay, so talk a little bit about specifically the role Green Plum plays. Is it around processing and analyzing all that data and getting it back out to those applications? How is it helping them, uh, the NICT, do its job? Sure. So one of the things that Green Plum uh, is, you can think of it as it's a heritage is as a Postgres SQL mm -hmm. uh, database, but it's a multi uh, massively parallel processing version of Postgres SQL, for lack of a better expression. So the raw speed at which uh, the calculate the data can be ingested uh, and the analysts can be performed you know, is orders of magnitude faster uh, than what they experienced using Postgres SQL. But another interesting attribute is that it can bring together different types or modalities of data into a single platform. So for example, in the way the research institution is using uh, data in this case, they're pulling in event data from their radar arrays uh, over high-speed uh, protocols, but they're also pulling in mapping data, which is basically raster data. For those who are uninitiated, raster data is essentially bitmap data, so it's kind of a fixed picture, as well as vector data. Uh, things like traffic flows or people movements, uh, and also social media data, which is mostly text-based. So, you know, in the old PostgreSQL world, you might need, for example, a specialized graphing or geographic database, a special text database, as well as your you know, PostgreSQL relational store. But with Greenplum, you can bring all of that data together in a single environment and a single platform. And one of the challenges of doing analytics within the database is that so rarely does all the data exist in one place. But with Greenplum and its ability to, you know, semantically understand a number of different data types, you can pull this data together into a, a single platform and then run analytics within the database cluster itself. So you're minimizing data movement uh, from environment to environment, and that helps data science proceed a lot faster. Right, and of course, when you're talking about uh, fast moving storms, the faster you can get that data, analyze it, get the results out to whatever applications are then feeding, uh, feeding whether citizens, parts of the government, uh, whatever the case might be, obviously the better. Right. Yeah, these types of rainstorms that they're specifically focused on are what they call guerrilla rainstorms. It's kind of an informal uh, term coined by the Japanese. Sounds scary. For I wouldn't sure. want to be caught in a guerrilla rainstorm. Yeah, especially if it's actually raining gorillas. Um, but the thing is about these storms is they're very concentrated events. They can deliver over four inches of rain an hour, suddenly, you know, out of the blue. They're notoriously difficult to predict. You know, they've got a life cycle of about 30 minutes. You know, they could cause severe flooding, hailstorms, even tornadoes. And, you know, conventional weather forecast models really aren't able to detect the small scale dynamics that create these storms. So in response to this, NICT is looking for, you know, ways to to develop new technologies and new methods to predict these events uh, and to help support uh, effective disaster response plans, excuse me. And Greenplum is a core piece of that. Okay, and so I know Greenplum is capable of analyzing a number of different types of data, uh, whether it's more structured data or less structured data. Talk about some of the sources. Uh, you mentioned some of them, but talk a little bit more about the sources of data that they're bringing in. And does Greenplum allow them to experiment with different data sources relatively quickly, uh, trying to find new sources of data that might have some predictive capabilities? Yeah, so uh, some of the data sources would be, for example, uh, weather data uh, coming in uh, as raster data, uh, data on air pollution, um, as well as population models. Or you might pull in vector data, like you know what's happening on your road networks and traffics, uh, mobile uh, phone and automotive sensing. Uh, you might have geotagged Twitter data, um, as well as uh, epidemiological surveillance data, uh, as well as data coming in from sensors, uh, like the weather radars, uh, some more IoT data. So you're bringing all that together in an environment where you know it can be basically uh, combined and collated and unified into one single data store that can be queried using standard tools or can be you know, analyzed using uh, standard languages like Python or R or, or even SQL. Uh, you know, with the Greenplum supports an open source um, library of analytic functions called Apache Madlib. Uh, it was developed uh, starting around 2009 as a joint project between EMC Corporation and researchers at UC Berkeley. 
And so what Madlib does is it provides data parallel implementations of over 50 mathematical, statistical, graph, and machine learning methods uh, for both structured and unstructured data. So the nice thing about Madlib is it will leverage the power of the distributed processing within Greenplum. So for example, let's say you're running a random forest algorithm. A random forest is basically an ensemble of decision trees. Well, you can parallelize the calculations of those decision trees across the entire cluster and return the results back, which is a lot faster than using, for example, single node solutions. Um, so basically with Madlib, users don't have to move data to a separate analytics environment and then move the results back into the database. They can test and validate their models against large scale data sets already in the database and then register those models in the production database. And that way they can shorten the life cycle of data science from development to deployment. One other core uh, piece of this puzzle is a library for PostgreSQL uh, called PostGIS. Now, uh, since uh, Greenplum is derived from PostgreSQL, it can take advantage of a lot of these libraries and extensions that are developed for Postgres. So PostGIS is uh, basically an extension that allows uh, Greenplum to understand and operate on geospatial objects uh, in addition to basically relational and text data types. So it, it's a, it provides a lot of utility to researchers who wanna use this type of mixed mode data in their analyses. Okay, great. Uh, so going forward, does uh, the NICT have plans to extend its use of Greenplum to maybe other types of problems that they're trying to predict and respond to? Oh, absolutely. So Japan, as you might imagine, has a number of smart city initiatives going on. And so what NICT would like to do is to take this data that they've already collected and kind of merge it with some of these other smart city applications data, particularly the, where uh, mapping is concerned. Uh, because you can do transformations on this raster data, like converting raster to vector data uh, within the database using the distributed infrastructure. So it greatly speeds things up. Um, you get some pretty tremendous um, speed ups. One of the things I should also uh, mention is uh, as an attribute and why Greenplum was selected is also kind of its way that it handles ingestion of data. So rather than kind of using single source uh, ETL uh, products, uh, Greenplum supports uh, basically parallelized injection uh, using scatter gather techniques. So all the nodes in the database can be ingesting data. And what that means is in another case, uh, I don't have the specific data for NICT, but in another case where Greenplum was being used, they were, uh, the customer was able to ingest you know, 30 terabytes of uncompressed data in two and a half hours, which is you know, a tremendous rate of data ingestion. So Greenplum, you know, with its uh, massively parallel ingestion process, is tailor-made for this type of application. All right, well, fantastic. So for those watching, uh, can you point them to some resources where they could take a look at Greenplum, maybe even play with it, uh, and get some more information? Oh, absolutely. So Greenplum comes in two flavors. One is an open source flavor that's available from greenplum.org. And you can download a copy of Greenplum, install it, you know, within a few minutes. You know, begin you know doing some basic tests with uh, that in your environment. Uh, commercial Green Plum, you know, you can find more information on that on the Pivotal Green Plum page. And we also have a Green Plum YouTube channel uh, with a number of videos that you know show everything from basic operations of Green Plum to uh, ingestion of different types of data and working with different types of data to doing analytics using Madlib uh, and using graphing functions. Uh, and things like that. So you get a good sense for, you know, the variety of applications uh, that you can deploy Greenplum for. And finally, if you're looking for more information about specifically analytics within the database, I'd point you to the, Mad, the Apache Madlib project page, which is madlib.apache.org, for more information about this SQL-based uh, analytics library. Okay, great. Well, thanks for those resources. Uh, thanks for taking the time today. Uh, I hope you have a, a good weather day out there and a good weather week. Uh, and you know, no you. gorilla storms or gorillas falling from the sky. Uh, All right. Well, thanks for that. And you as well. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone.